talk depth so much. Uh, how do you do you go into a game with a rotation in mind with something down on pay? I mean, or or is it just a matter of feel um, for you? I think it's got to be a little bit of both. Um, for for the most part, it's how we work during the week, how we prepare, how the guys prepare. Um, who shows that they're ready to go into a game at any moment? Um, that's that's kind of a – and that, to me, that's kind of a, a feel, you know, how the guys on the field are playing. If the guys on the field are playing well, then you're going to kind of let them roll. Yes, with that said, do you like what you've – kind of the rotation you've got into the first couple of weeks? And it seems like – Rashid's the guy that doesn't start, but has played a lot of snaps in both games. Absolutely, yeah. He's he's been he's done a tremendous job preparing each week, coming in the game. Um, he's executed at a high level. Um, so, it's, you know, he he's kind of the main one. Victor Cutler's got in got in a good bit. So, just trying to roll those guys as much as we can. Try to stay fresh. Everybody's stepping up in competition this week at all across this. When you look at Georgia Tech's defensive front, what do you, what are you expecting? What kind of challenge do you think the offensive line is going to have? Yeah, I think their defensive front is tremendous. Um, you know, they do a lot of things up front that, that create problems and issues that you got to make sure you're working and um, you got to be prepared to go into it. Kind of going along with that, obviously you've had a year now in the ACC. You've kind of seen what the conference is like. I guess what did you get out of last year in terms of the D-lines that, that you guys face and what do you kind of see this year from some of those teams, Georgia Tech? You know, obviously Miami is kind of up there. You guys will face them. And, you know, even the, the Clemsons and the Boston Colleges. Yeah, I, I think in this league, I think any any time you go into a game, it, it doesn't really matter who you're playing. It's you're you're going to get their best. Um, you know, I, I think the competition in this league's tremendous. I think each week you it's a you know you got to show up, you got to play, you got to go execute. One of your guys is having trouble pass blocking. How do you how does that impact what formations you run and when? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know if somebody's struggling because because of, of a matchup or or whatever it is is you know how can we generate some help and and help those guys and take a little pressure off of them. Michael's been around f for so long, uh, and obviously the the whole time you've been here, you know, back here. What does he do to kind of be consistently good out there? And, and, you know, the line can make so many, mis you know, you can make a mistake here, a mistake there, but it seems like he's consistently every game has been really, really good. Yeah, Mike, Mike's a guy, he's very um, self-aware. So he, he tries to be a perfectionist in everything he does from a technique standpoint. And, uh, you know, he knows if he's struggling in a certain area, how do I need to make adjustments? How do I need to correct it? He works extra at it. Uh, it's extremely important to him, and I think that shows in his play. What do you feel confident as far as a number? Like uh, you mentioned, Vic and, and Rashid, uh, is, is that confidence at seven? And then maybe talk about that that next group and who's who's right there. Yeah, I mean we got Travante Sylvester that comes in and does a good job for us. He, you know. Um, Renato Brown, who's played a lot of football, who's who's still we're trying to get get him back going up to full speed, and you know I, I think uh, I think right now where we're sitting is we're sitting in a good position. We just got to continue to push and continue to work to get better each week. In a bye week, Jeff was talking about he gives a lot of the younger guys uh, some extra reps. Is that kind of the the same approach with the offensive line to, to get those those freshmen, those retro freshmen, more snaps and availability time? Yeah, coach, coach does that as a whole. You know, try to get all those young guys extra reps. Um, you know, get some of the guys that have a, had a lot of reps in games, get them some some time to get fresh, freshen up. But at the same time, we got to continue to work on our fundamentals, our technique, and and stay sharp on that so you don't lose the game speed aspect. Sort of playing off what Jody asked you a minute ago, it seems like several years ago there wasn't as much substitution on the offensive line, the, the explanation being we like five guys working together. Now there does seem to be a lot more. Is that just because you got more good players or have, is the philosophy more, yeah, we need to sub there as much as anywhere? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. There, you know, there there is uh, something about the continuity in a unit. Uh, the more times they can take snaps together and I trust the guy that's next to me and, 
I don't necessarily have to say something. He knows what I'm thinking. I, I think there's a big part of that. Um, but at the same time, the more we get other guys in and, and they play together and they're all on the same page and they're executing at a higher level and there's a trust factor there that, you know, you feel confident in putting those guys in the game. You run a play, it's a, it's a play. It's a, it's a formation. You've got five, four or five backs back there that are different. Is it different for the guys up front to block for Maurice, say, than Isaac or, you know, or, or Don, whatever? Is, is it different when there's a different back in there? No, I, I think our approach is the exact same. I, I think at the end of the day, you got to go execute the play that's called and we got to go make it work. And that's, uh, you know, you got to do your job. You know, and I think that's a big part of it. Appreciate y'all.